Greetings, greetings, greetings. Welcome to Hill Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. Hope this Tuesday uh, is an incredible day for you, a bright and sunny day where I am in California, actually Los Angeles area. Today we are having a little bit of a um, overcast and it's like, it's not as sunny as it used to be. But it's absolutely amazing. It's as if we have autumn in summer. Hope you had a wonderful week and that you are healthy uh, and doing good. For those of you who do not know me, I am Lisa Bubari, uh, founder of Heal Within, uh, healwithin.com. I'm a, by trade a clinical hypnotherapist, stress management consultant. So I, hello Rubik, hello Raul. Thank you for being here and being present. Uh, thank you, always being here. Uh, so today I'm going to be talking about something that I have not talked about in a long, long time. Actually, it's been, I was uh, checking uh, my past uh, posts and I saw that the last time I talked about the myth about hypnosis and hypnotherapy but was over a year ago. So I do talk about hypnosis, but most people have certain questions that I am here to break the myths and some of the questions that uh, some clients have asked me. And one of the biggest question is, what exactly is hypnosis? Ah, oh, what a beautiful question. Hypnosis in itself, right, of what I do. Hypnosis is an altered state, truly. It's an altered state from where you are to uh, being in a place of your imagination is delving deeper into a state of deep relaxation. And hypnosis can be in different uh, forms and formats. It can be light hypnosis, it can be in deep state of hypnosis, the same way as when we relax, we can, or sleep. Well, sometimes we sleep very lightly, and there are times that you go into deep sleep and have a profound sleep. So hypnosis, in a fact, in a way, is the same thing. When a client comes for my sessions to do hypnotherapy, uh, what I help them do is first and foremost experience the state of hypnosis, which is that state of relaxation. As a matter of fact, I can even hypnotize you as you are listening to me. How? is not by hypnotizing you, but guiding you to imagine certain things. What I like to do is say, I become the voice of the GPS that directs you when you punch in an address. And just imagine sitting in a car and you want to go somewhere that you don't know. So it's the place of unknown, correct? But you trust yourself, you trust in your abilities, you trust in the abilities of your driving, you trust the car. You trust that the car has enough gas to where you want to go. So all that is in place. Now, what you do is you take the address and punch in into your phone or to the GPS of your car, and you put the address, you put the city, you put uh, whatever it's needed, or that point of destination, and you push go, right? And the GPS configures where you are, the starting point, and knows where the end point is. And it says, ready. Once it's ready for the direction is all set, all you have to do is push for the direction to start taking you. The next thing you know, you might have people in the car. You might be talking to them or uh, just your mind is wandering from place to place. And soon 
you forget about the GPS but here's the interesting part while you are talking listening to the sound of music or just wondering in your thoughts about where you're going what you're going to say who are you going to be meeting you are still listening to the GPS so a part of your mind a part of your brain is very much focused on where the GPS is taking you so consciously we are doing uh, what the GPS is directing us to go and unconsciously we are wondering in our own thoughts or talking to the people next to us hmm that in a way is how hypnosis and hypnotherapy is while you're sitting on uh, in the recliner the recliner is in place holding your body uh, the room everything is intact I'm sorry uh, everything is in, in, intact and guess what's happening uh, your mind is wondering while the hypnotic suggestions begin to give you the suggestions for you to go a, into a state of relaxation so from this conscious alert state into this place of feeling more comfortable being more comfortable in your body being more comfortable just sitting there being comfortable with my voice directing and then beginning to give the suggestions now does that make sense I just want to first understand if you can say yes or no just give me uh, pointers uh, thumbs up or whatever if this makes sense that while you are quite aware you also become unaware so a part of hypnosis is taking you from this conscious alert state to another state of your imagination or where you want to go here's an example as you are listening to me right here right now I want you to imagine in your own mind going into your kitchen either a condo apartment workplace or even in your home so just imagine walking into your own kitchen done now once that's done I want you to imagine opening one of the cupboards and finding a clear glass and bring that and place it on one of your kitchen counters okay once that's done imagine in your own mind again opening the refrigerator and opening the vegetable drawers and finding a beautiful luscious yellow lemon and pick that one up and bring it close the refrigerator door put it on the kitchen counter now find one of the drawers open one of the drawers that has all the utensils in there and find a nice cutting uh, a sharp knife and pick that up and place it on the kitchen counter so by now you have what you have a lemon a clear glass a drinking water glass and a sharp knife what we need is a cutting board so find a cutting board in your own imagination and bring it and place it on the kitchen counter now we have four items what I would like you to do just imagine that you take that lemon and you place it on that cutting board now you take that sharp knife and you cut the lemon in half right once you have that lemon separate the two place one on the cutting board and you take the other lemon and you bring that glass and squeeze the lemon all the way into that glass squeeze it until the pop of the lemon drops all four of them or maybe five all of that done take that lemon place it on the cutting board and very gently bring this glass 
to your mouth close, closer, closer, and put it at the edge of your mouth and very gently take a sip. Now, I want to know how many of you tasted the lemon? And after you have a sip, you can place it on the kitchen counter. And think to yourself, how did the lemon taste? Was it sour? Was it bitter? Was it one of those sweet lemons? So whatever it was, did you taste it? Did you even make that face? Some do, some others, knowing that it could be a sweet lemon, they just drink it. And others say, well, I didn't do any of it. And that is where I come to explain about the art of hypnosis and hypnotherapy. So in a way, hypnosis is an altered state of consciousness known as a trance state. So what happens is that in a practice of hypnosis, our imagination is far greater than the reality. And what we do is take you into that state of imagination that your body and every nerve, every essence of you becomes so heightened into that altered heightened state that your imagination makes it feel or think it is reality. And yet it's not. So because there was no lemon, and yet because most 99.9% .9 of people already know the taste of lemon, the tongue automatically responds to the taste, although there is no real lemon. Now, if you did taste it and you swallowed your saliva, even though there was none of that, I want you to know it's the same as me saying, have you tasted a bitter, dark chocolate? Most people who have tasted it, they go, yes, it's so good. And others who have not will not know. But the body has a reaction to taste, to smell, to touch automatically. So the main distinction between hypnosis and self-hypnosis simply that self-hypnosis requires an understanding of how to induce yourself to go into that state, whereas when I do hypnosis, I take you, guide you like that GPS to where you need to go. So in trance state, People become less aware of what is going on around them and more aware of what is happening inside their body, inside their thoughts, inside their memory, and inside everything that needs to be. What we are here to discuss, to help, change, modify, or I like to call it edit. So one of the questions is, can you uh, hypnotize, can anyone be hypnotized? The answer is yes. Everyone can be hypnotized if they choose to. So in a way, you need consent. Most clients who come to me for hypnotherapy automatically from the moment they make the call, from the time they come in and they sit to place the intake form, they are already ready. So before I even do any type of a hypnotherapy with my clients, I like to do a little bit of a consultation to find out what their needs are, what is it that they want, and if they are ready for the change. So, and then I go in educating them, profound educating of the mind and the body and how it works. So that what are the triggers and what is it that I do once they relax and how we shift and alter and or bypass the critical factor to make the changes in the subconscious mind.
because practically hypnotherapy works with the subconscious mind instead of cognitive uh, conscious state. Another question is, what is hypnotherapy used for? Well, hypnosis is used for hypnotherapy. I'm going to give you the difference of what is hypnosis and hypnotherapy. Hypnotherapy is the tool of taking you through therapy, utilizing therapy and hypnosis to make the changes. So in a way, it's a tool. It's the tool that I use, like the GPS uses, to take you from one point to point B. So uh, that is what we do, from taking you from the conscious point to the subconscious point, deep state of relaxation. So it can be used for uh, anxiety, reducing stress and anxiety, panic, fears, fears of driving, fears of uh, flying, fears of any kind of a fear, fears of bugs or even dogs. A lot of us have such profound fears and it could be a fear of real things or it could be fears that has been created by us for us to protect us from moving forward in life. The self-made bars, jail, that I like to call it, yet we have the key. We always had the key. We have the key and the tools, yet we place ourselves behind those bars and we are afraid to move forward in life because sometimes behind bars is safer. It's comfortable. That's what we know. Another thing it's uh, very much used for is stop smoking. It also works with addiction. It works with a lot of medical things that I work with uh, other than just weight loss and anxiety and stop smoking. I work with IBS. I work with cancer patients to reduce pain, reduce um, discomfort and work with the immune system, boost the immune system as they are going through the chemotherapy or the radiation, so that after effect, the vomiting or the uh, anxiety that they have, we also reduce that. Uh, we also work precisely with clients who want to give birth, so it's getting the body ready and prepare for the uh, contraction and uh, just the same as we contract and expand the body uh, for of a woman. Also, the uterus and everything gets open and ready for having the baby coming through the birth canal more easily and gently instead of contracting the pain. So it's a gamut of medical hypnosis, light hypnosis, all the way to modifying behaviors and uh, habits, habits of smoking, eating, drinking, or even addiction is working with the emotional connection to what we believe we are addicted to. And I'm going to give more profound answers on that. Now, someone said, does hypnotherapy really work? And I like to call it, yes, it does, especially for those who are open. I healed my body, myself, through hypnotherapy. It was over 20 years ago that I developed ovarian cysts. It was my third time, and the first time was 9.2 centimeters. I had surgery. Second time I had surgery, it was 8.7 centimeters. And the third time, I decided uh, I no longer want to have that surgery, but find other means. And I was referred by an acupuncturist to a hypnotherapist, and in four sessions, my readiness, right? It was because of my readiness that I connected, did this mind-body connection. And through mind-body connection, I believe 
in my mind, I healed within and I no longer needed to have the surgery. The same way as I do self-hypnosis and I've had five root canals and all my dental work for the past 14, 15 years has been with absolutely no topical, no anesthesia in my mouth. So what I do is five minutes, six minutes before the dentist does the oral surgery, the work on me, I do self-hypnosis, hypnotizing my gum, localize, and bypass the pain that goes into the nerves. Thus, the dentist, my dentist, I love Dr. De Yekikian, and I have a great testimonial from him, and you can see that on YouTube, and I have it on my website. What he does, is he does all the dental work, and then by the time he's finished and he's done, I have absolutely no residual bloatiness, uh, not bloatiness, but uh, my mouth is not full, and uh, it's my gums are all good and the healing process the same way as pre-op and post-op when we do for pain management and reducing anxiety hypertension obesity those are the things that we work with it's so much easier for the body to heal and emotionally we are more connected and then another question that is very very much important it says is hypnotherapy co covered by insurance? Well, I would like to say, I wish it was in all states. There are states back east that a hypnotherapist is on site at the hospital. In California, we have hypnotherapists that are working with cancer patients at many hospitals that are open and receptive, that yes, insurance pays for that. Uh, so there is a medical code, and if your doctor prescribes it and believes in working with holistic integrative, and it can be quite useful, there is uh, insurances that pay for it. Uh, I know the media, the industry, uh, it covers hypnotherapy for many of the aspects, but there are insurance companies who until now have not yet accepted to pay full for the insurance so i would say contact your insurance company contact your doctors and if you can get a referral by all means it can be covered but not all insurance companies cover it so most hypnotherapists are um, just like um, plastic surgery or something like that unless it's medical it is not covered by insurance what are the side effects of hypnosis? I can say 95% there is no side effect except, um, except healing, except uh, being profoundly relaxed and uh, having your habit changed. But there are residual uh, side effects. And I like to call, I don't even call them side effects because I like to call them what some people feel as they come out of hypnosis. Uh, it could be some things like grogginess, like, oh, and other people feel so elated. It's as if having a very deep nap and someone awakens you and you are like uh, lightheaded, you are not fully there, fully awake, fully present, and that is what you feel. Some people, um, also have this profound change when we do this transformational work that they cry and feel depleted and that is not a side effect but what i like to call is deep work in therapy and it happens in regular therapy or just hypnotherapy so you're going through therapy work and there might be crying, um, you're touching a lot of emotions, and it could be from the past, from the present, and you are remembering a lot of things. So is there a side effect from remembering certain things? I, this is what I like to say. I like to say, if it is already a part of your past, 
It cannot hurt you because all you're doing is remembering it. It is not happening in real. It is not happening now. And that is one of the things I would suggest is work with a hypnotherapist has that, that has quite experience to hold you safe to guard you and protect you in with your emotions to know that as you are traveling into that memory lane to your childhood and if there's been ptsd or trauma they know how to ha handle it versus someone who's done hypnotherapy or hypnosis classes for a weekend and now they are uh, calling themselves they are a hypnotist or a hypnotherapist. Believe it or not, there, you can learn how to do hypnosis, but the art of working with a client to do the therapy work, especially medical therapy, to numb the skin, to numb the body to a point that the muscle memory is not there and you can have uh, a needle go through and have absolutely no feeling and bypass pain, that in itself needs a therapist who can really guide you in a safe place and help you guide yourself and give yourself permission to take full control of your mind and of your body. It's, it's a science and it's an art. That's what I can say because we teach self-hypnosis. I want you to learn how to do the self-hypnosis so you can utilize this tool automatically on your own. Okay. Another myth, um, can hypnotherapy, uh, is it good for OCD? I believe it is good for OCD. I believe it is good for PTSD. I believe it is good for a lot of things because what we do uh, is teach you how to be more in control, how to be more in control of uh, your behaviors and your habits and change it, to modify it. It's like standing in front of a... a uh, an elevator, two elevators, and this elevator is working, and this elevator is out of order, and those two buttons are right there, and you keep pushing on the this one button that the elevator is out of order. Hmm? So if the elevator is out of order, and it wasn't, you can find the triggers that have triggered you to become angry, triggered you to be in fear, triggered you in doing a lot of things that no longer works for you and put them out of order. It becomes, no matter what happens, it does not phase you. So we can also teach you that. In a way, I like to call OCD or ADHD or any of those habits, nothing but profound sense of acute hyper awareness and being aware that if you touch this whereas before it gives you a sense of um, discomfort or you don't like it and it's a control issue finding going and doing a timeline finding where was the trigger that created this system for you to take more control when you were not in control, when you felt so out of control and you had to find something for you to take control of and you, this thing or this one thing or few things you started obsessing over and now you cannot let it go. And through hypnotherapy, once you recognize it, we evoke it. You embrace this fact about yourself, the fact of what it is and how it is, how it has benefited you all this time, and it no longer does, letting it go, releasing it so that you can evolve, live, 
free of that obsession, free of that control, free of that anger, free of that dis-ease or discomfort so that you can live much happily, comfortably, and easily. So in a way, that is what I do. Help you feel healthier and better. Um, if there's any questions, by all means, I can, I'll be more than happy to take any questions right here. Hello, Elizabeth. Hello, Armine. Hi, Tatev. Thank you for being present. If you are here, please show me some with some emojis. I answer all my questions. And uh, yes, uh, you can always find uh, or contact me by going to www.healwithin.com. Uh, find me on Instagram, on Twitter, uh, or even here. I post a lot of information and articles on my Heal Within uh, Healing Center page on Facebook. So if there's any questions that you have, by all means, please let me know. I will answer each and every of the questions. Also, just yesterday, I posted something that it was uh, uh, Dr. Spiegel, David Spiegel from Stanford uh, Medical School, wrote a whole uh, um, article on hypnotherapy and pain management and addiction. So if you have an interest of seeing how we help addiction, anxiety, PTSD, by all means, please check my Heal Within page on Facebook and you can see more information on that. So to close, I want to thank each and every of you that come week after week and are present. And uh, without you, I would not be here. I come every week to inform you, teach you, bring information about the work I do, inspire the ones who want to better themselves and feel more whole. And we have to know one thing. We are perfect just as we are. We are unique individuals. We are gifts of God. And everything I do, first, I hold you safe. Hold you safe and want you to know that change only happens when we are ready. So in a way, when we heal within is transforming ourselves. That's where change begins. When we tap within to love ourselves, appreciate ourselves, accept ourselves, for our history so that we can create the new stories that we want and we want to achieve and we want to become. But with that, I thank you. Thank you for being here. God bless you. I hope this information was beneficial to you. And if it was, by all means, please just press subscribe. Be a part of our Heal Within newsletter news that it's happening all the time and share this information with someone who may be benefiting that has not known or seen this okay until next week i bid you goodbye and for the ladies who are a part of this by all means if you are in the los angeles area in one month, we have our 3E event coming up. It's a day dedicated to you. It's a day of empowering. Please contact us, share, and find out more information and uh, join us. God bless you, and may universal light be with you and surround you and protect you. Bye-bye.